you up. He will empower you. You're going to be a fantastic servant. Can't wait to see you soon. God bless you. What's up, everybody? How are you guys doing? So I want to give you guys a little backstory. Me and my wife were talking, and I asked her, will you ever go up there and preach again? She said, yeah. She asked me, will you? I said, yeah, that would be pretty cool. So we were thinking maybe we could start working on something and maybe in another three to four months we could preach again. But well, God had different plans for us. Later on that same day when we got to church, Veronica came and asked us if we could preach because someone had to cancel and we had a week to prepare. We were like, oh, snap. <laughs> Talk about divine acceleration. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. God is moving. He's sitting down. He's moving fast. Amen. Amen. All right. Tonight I want to talk about Paul. So, like Paul, all of us have a past. Whether you grew up in church or not, whether you grew up a Christian or Catholic or a drug addict or an alcoholic, whatever your story is. If you're sitting here or watching this online tonight, that means God somehow or some way touched your heart. I want to tell you guys, God is still looking for you and God still loves you and God still wants to use you and your story so that you can be a great testimony and reach people in your circle. Amen. If God can save a guy like Paul and use him and his past the way he did, then God can use you too. What I love about Paul is that he went 100% full throttle for what he believed in. The first time we hear about Paul is in the New Testament in Acts, and his name was Saul. He was there when they killed a Christian named Stephen, and he was all for it because Saul hated Christians. He was young, he was educated, he was zealous, and he was on his way to becoming a rabbi, which is like a teacher in the Jewish faith. The meaning of the word zealous is showing great energy and enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or objective. In other words, zealous means going hard for something you believe in. Saul believed in God. In fact, he was a very religious man, but he did not believe in Jesus. He thought Jesus was a liar and a threat to his Jewish faith. So he was gonna do anything to stop anyone who preached his word. Like I said, 100% full throttle. He killed Christians, he arrested Christians, he went from house to house pulling Christians out of their homes, men and women, he did not care. He was on a mission, and according to him, he was doing good, he thought he was doing it for God. He didn't know any better, he was taught religion, rules, and regulations his whole life. And Jesus came and broke all the rules, Saul didn't like that. Like we would say today, Paul was a beast. He was feared. He was ready to do whatever he had to do to accomplish his mission. There was no gray area with Paul. He was all the way in or nothing at all. But he just had the wrong idea of what was right. But that's what's so cool about Saul's story is that Jesus still loved him while he was doing all this crazy stuff towards Christians. Right. Because Jesus knew his heart. Amen. Uh, uh, Saul was hard-headed and stubborn and stuck in his ways and nothing was going to change his mind like many of us today So that's why Jesus himself Appeared to him because that's the only way he was going to believe So Jesus appeared to Saul as a bright light which made him fall When Saul seen the light he said who are you my lord? Jesus replied it is I Jesus the one you are persecuting persecuting then Jesus blinded him so that he can get his attention. Saul did not eat or drink for three days. I would imagine he was tripping out or depressed. I know I would be if that happened to me. Then God gave Saul instructions to go find the Christian named Ananias so that he could pray for him. When God told Ananias to pray for Saul, he was like, what? Heck no, that guy is crazy. <laughs> Ananias was scared to be around Saul because of all the stuff he did towards Christians. But even though Ananias was scared, he was obedient and did what God told him to do anyways. Amen. We need to be Christians like Ananias because we never know when we could be praying over the next fall. No matter how far gone a person is into drugs, alcohol, or false religion, you can be the Christian that brings sight to them and changes their lives. Right. Come on. 
So when the knights began to pray over Saul, then something like scales fell off his eyes. See, that was Saul leaving his old life and opening his eyes to a whole new life. That was Saul becoming Paul. Man. He saw things differently now that he had Jesus in his heart. Right. Now he was going 100% full throttle for Jesus. Man. He went on to become one of the most influential apostles that ever lived. His faith, love, and compassion for Jesus was so amazing, he was saving, left, uh, saving people left and right. In Acts chapter 19, verse 11 and 12, God says God gave him the power to perform unusual miracles. Right. In Acts, it says that Paul preached all night long and a young man fell asleep by a window and fell three stories to his death. Paul went downstairs, revived him, and then went back upstairs and kept preaching. Beast. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Handkerchiefs and aprons that barely touched his skin were placed on sick people and they were healed. Yes. He was saving prison guards. He was starting up ministries everywhere he went. He was absolutely not ashamed of Jesus at all. He did not care about what people thought about him. Yes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, Paul says, As for me, it matters very little how I might be evaluated by you or any human authority that, oh, I don't even trust my own judgment at this point. Paul was not a sometimes Christian or only when I need to be a Christian Christian or only in front of people Christian. No, he was a real Christian, a man on fire for Jesus all the time. Yeah. He did not care about anything else but to save people. Right. What you have to understand is that just because Paul was saved now doesn't mean it was all smooth sailing after that. No, absolutely not. He was going all in for Jesus and in those times that was not easy. In Acts chapter 14, chap, uh, chapter 14, verse 19 and 20, it says, Paul was stoned and left for dead, but when they left, he got up and kept, uh, kept preaching. Beast. Acts 16, verse 22 and 23 says, he was stripped and severely beaten with wooden rods and thrown into prison. But while in prison, he saved some prison guards and their families too. Right. Beast. He was dragged out of cities. He was beaten by angry mobs, but he kept on preaching the word of God, beast. Amen. But when they would mistreat Paul, he didn't let that stop him or change his mind. No, he just kept it moving. In Acts chapter 18, verse six, Paul said, but when they opposed him and insulted him, he shook the dust from his clothes and said, your blood is upon your own head and I am innocent from now on. I will go preach to the Gentiles. Amen. He kept on preaching till finally he was executed. If, in one of his letters, he says, there was no greater joy than to die for his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In Acts chapter 20, verse 19 and 20, Paul says, I have done the work of the Lord humbly with many tears. I have endured the trials that, that came to me from the plots of the Jews but I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your home. Beast. Amen. Talk about going 100% full throttle. So now let's put that into our perspective. See, like Paul, before I knew Jesus, I mean, I wasn't literally killing Christians, but I was definitely going against everything Jesus stands for. I was a drug addict. I was praying to false idols. I was stealing, I was lying, I was cheating, I was hurting people physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I was in love with money, I was lusting over worldly things, I had no self-respect and I had no self-control. And let me tell you, when I was living the street life, I didn't know any better. I thought I had to I, I thought I was doing what I had to do to survive. So I was going 100% full throttle at all these things, like many of the kids in the streets today, a lot of them don't know no better. One of the things my mom told me that I would never forget, she said the only time she gets a little bit of, or any kind of rest was when I was in jail. Because that's the only time she knew where I was at and I was somewhat safe. I would come back after being gone for days and weeks, so malnourished, sucked up, skinny, coming off a binge, and she would always let me back in. 
but not too many kids are blessed to have a mom like mine. Yeah. It was a it was horrible what I put that woman through. But just like Paul, Jesus loved us while we're doing all these things because yeah. he sees our heart. Yeah. And just like Paul, this, despite our past, we can still be influential and reach people too. Right. But also like Paul, it's not going to be easy just because you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. No. The devil will come at you even harder because he knows you're on a mission for Jesus and he's losing you now. Come on. Just like Paul, people are going to mistreat you and say ugly things about you to your face and even worse behind your back. People are not going to believe you when you say you change. People are going to look at you funny. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 12 and 13, Paul says, We work wearily with our own hands to make a living. We bless those who curse us. We are patient with those who abuse us. We appeal gently to the evil things people said about us, yet we are treated like the world's garbage, like everybody's trash right up to the present moment. So like Paul, uh, so like Robert said, <laughs> so like Robert said, we were never meant to blend in. When God puts his hand on you, you're supposed yes. to stand out. Yeah. The devil doesn't like that. Come on. People you grew up with are going to make fun of you. They're going to say, oh man, Rick, you changed. You think you're better than us now. Come on. Don't let them guilt you into believing that garbage because that's the devil. Right. People who really love you are going to be happy that you changed. Yes. Yeah. And want to know what? I am better now. I belong to the most high. I belong to Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, like Paul, it's time for us to start going 100% full throttle for Jesus and be ready for whatever the devil throws at us. Yeah. We have, we've had our encounter with Jesus. We accepted him as our Lord and Savior. We shared our testimony. We had our mind shift, and now it's time to go to work. Like Paul, it's go time. Amen. It's time to spread the word at work, at home, Amen. at the grocery store, at the restaurant, at your family's house, yes. at your cousin's house, and most importantly, in this community where Jesus placed us. Amen. He placed us here for a reason. The Citadel is different, and all kinds of different, uh, all kinds of people from different walks of life will be drawn to us because of that. Right. And it's our job to receive them with arms wide open, yes. forget what people think or say. We need to be the people that we needed that time in our lives. Right. And when you start feeling like it's getting too hard or you can't do this anymore, remember what Paul went through and how God used him and his life to touch others. God wants to do the same for me and you. We just got to put in the work and help our fellow believers with anything that the church need to, needs help with in order for it to grow and reach people. Yeah. Like Paul, you never know who's going to be touched by your story. Right. You just got to keep preaching and keep spreading the word. Yeah. And when people reject you, don't let that discourage you or make you feel bad about yourself. Say a prayer for them and do it like Paul did. Dust yourself off and keep it moving on to the next. Amen. We have no time to waste. Remember, they, re they rejected Jesus too. Right. If we put just a fraction of the same effort we used to put into finding drugs, stealing or hustling or the gangs we were in or, fight, or drinking and fighting with your wife or husband, imagine what we can do if we just take a fraction of that effort we put into all that garbage and put it into Jesus. Come on. Just a fraction. Imagine what impact you would do or have on people around you. I know because I've been there. You can't tell me that it's impossible to be free from addiction and it's too hard. If you have faith in God, nothing is impossible. Yes. Like Veronica said Sunday, a lot of Christians won't go where it's dark because they don't want to get affected by their darkness or tainted. Let's be the Christians that go into their darkness and affect their darkness with our light. Amen. The light Jesus Christ gave us. Yes. Like Paul, let's not be ashamed of what God is doing for us. If you read the books Paul wrote, he's learning. He's learning as he goes. He's learning as he preaches. We don't need to be perfect and know everything to do God's work. Amen. In 1 Corinthians, Chapter 2, verse 3 to 5, 
Paul said, I come to you in weakness, timid, and trembling, and my message and preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. I did that so you would not trust in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Yes. So even Paul, the beast, was weak, timid, and trembling at times, but he still did what he had to do to accomplish what God put in his heart. It's okay to be weak. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to not be perfect. It's okay. But we got to put our faith in God and let him guide us and show yes. us what to do. Amen. If you get anything from this message tonight, let it be this. It's time we fight for what we believe in. Yes. It's time we give everything we have to the Lord and fight and make a way for the kids that are stuck in this world. Amen. It's time we stop being ashamed of God and start doing what God or start, and start doing what we have to do to help the body of Christ. Yeah. It's time, guys. Yeah. It's time. It starts at home first. We have to be what we preach at at home and not be hypocrites and only act like Christians at church yeah. because that's going to push people away. Yeah. Right. I'm going to close with a prayer. My wife will come and bring it home. If everybody can bow their heads, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to say a prayer for all the prodigal boys, girls, and women. Yes. The ones who haven't made it back home yet, Lord. The ones who haven't got their sight back, Lord. The, I yes. want to raise them up to you. May you give the parents of those lost souls the strength yes. to keep on going, Lord. Yes. The ones who pray day and night for their babies that are stuck in bondage, Lord. Yes. The babies whose parents traded them in for the ways of this world, Lord. Those babies that don't know love, the babies who never had a chance against the evil of this world, Lord. Yes. To those parents who lost their babies either to the street, prison, or ultimately the, the grave, Lord. To those babies who got life sentences for something they did as kids and they didn't know any better, Lord. To all the kids who lost their life behind senseless shootings and the parents who would never see their babies again, Lord. May you give rest to all those who can't sleep at night because they don't know where their babies are, Lord. May you put a hedge of protection over those babies that don't know where their parents are and are left to fend for themselves, Lord. May you shine a light on them and give them sight so they can find their way back home, Lord. And thank you for all the times you brought me back home, Lord, when I didn't see a way or I don't know how I made it back, Lord. It was by your grace I made it back home, Lord. And on behalf of all the prodigals, Lord, I want to say we're sorry for the, what we put our loved ones through. In Jesus' name, amen. every one of us and it's up to us to walk into that because God also gives us free will the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 23 you say I am allowed to do anything but not everything is good for you you say I am allowed to do anything but not everything is beneficial so even though we have the choice to do whatever we want we have to be careful with what we choose because our actions have consequences, whether they be good or bad. Amen. If we choose to be obedient to what God is calling us to do, he will equip us. Yes. The more we step into our calling, the more we will grow, the more confident we'll become, the more zealous to do the thing, these great things for the kingdom of God, yes. to do what we were made for. Yes. But like my husband was saying, we need to get out there and do what we need to do because this is our time. Yes. We have a generation that needs saving, a generation that is lost, a generation that doesn't know their true identity in Christ, a dying generation because people are being hooked on drugs at such a young age and killing each other or killing themselves. And I really believe out of all the places that God could have placed us, he placed us here for a reason. This is our time, guys. We can't take it lightly. We are made for such a time as this. The Bible says in Matthew 9, 36 and th through 38, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. 
So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send out workers into his field. We are those workers, you guys. And it's our time to harvest the fields. And as more people come, God will continue to raise them up and send them out. Because yes, we all have people in our circles we can reach who either don't know about Jesus or do know and have lost their way. Like Veronica was saying, people are waiting for us to step into position to be delivered or be set free. That's a big responsibility. That's what we're made for, to bring heaven to earth. That's why we're here. Each person listening to this message right now has a purpose in the kingdom of God. Yes. God made us for a reason. 1 Peter 4, 8 to 10 says, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sin. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. We each have the gifts of the Spirit. We're stronger in some more than others, and whatever those gifts may be, we come together as a whole, and we use them for God's glory. Right. Tap in, you guys. Find a group to join. We're building this church from the ground up. We need more ministries. So pray and ask God what he's calling you to do, where he wants you, and take the steps needed to begin to do this. Yeah. It's exciting. And it's amazing how much you'll grow in your relationship with God just by being obedient. Amen. We each have a family member or know someone who's in desperate need of Christ. And we're here to bring Jesus to each one of them. Yes. Even if you don't know how to pray, even if you don't know where to start, start praying. Prayer changes things. Amen. God hears us, God answers us, and God wants to help us. Yes. If you don't know how to pray, you could join our prayer group in the morning. Amen. And just by listening, you'll start to learn and pray and grow. You can ask God to teach you how to pray and what to pray for. God is our ever-present help in time of need. And when we are not in need, we can stand in the gap for someone who is in need or for someone who doesn't know how to pray. Amen. Like Ricky said, we need to be who we needed when we were in that position. We need to live in such a way that those watching us will grow too. Because even if you know it or not, people look up to us especially our children, and they don't learn from what we tell them. They learn by what they see us doing. Right. We need to lead by example. The example that Jesus Christ has set before us. His greatest commandment to us is to love each other as he has loved us. <clears throat> we need to be forgiving toward one another, to not judge anyone else's situation, but be a helping hand. Let's not close our eyes to what we see in our neighborhoods or to our loved ones. If we just loved each other more and showed more compassion to one another, change would happen. We live in a world where everyone wants to be heartless and mean and selfish, and I understand that. That all comes from being hurt. But in return, we become what we hate or, who, or what hurt us. But let's rise above all that. Let's be a people who is not easily offended, who forgives quickly, who walks in love with one another, who picks each other up when we fall who prays for each other. Let's teach each other and our kids that it's okay to love and forgive and show mercy and not judge each other. Right. Life is what we make it. Right. We need to put our foot down and stop letting the enemy control our world. Yes. We need to rise up and have a voice. We need to spread God's message to everyone. Amen. People are dying, you guys. People are killing themselves. We need to make it a priority to do God's work because we never know what tomorrow will bring. No, not everyone will be in agreement with us and that's okay. We do what we can and ask God to take over from there and those seeds will grow. And let's not keep our eyes fixed on the next person's mistakes because men will fail us daily and we all fall short. That's why we need to keep our eyes fixed on God because God will never fail us. The Bible says in 3 John 1 to 11, Dear friends, don't let this bad example example influence you. Follow only what is good. Remember that those who do good prove that they are God's children, and those who do evil prove that they don't know God. So no matter what anyone else is doing, keep your eyes on God. Pray for the next person. Pray that God will help their situation, that God will bring them back. Yeah. It blew my mind how many people said that they were touched by mine and my husband's preaching. I never knew we had that much impact. This is all new to us. 
but that just showed me if each one of us steps out and into our calling, we'll reach that many more people. Amen. We don't have to be perfect. We just have to be real because someone is going through something we have been through and we can help them with the help of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what we're made for. But if we're caught up with being perfect or religious or holding grudges or being hateful or cold hearted, we're gonna miss that opportunity. If we don't do it, God will send somewhere else, someone else in our place. And I don't know about you, but I want to live out my full destiny. Yeah. I don't want the enemy to take that from me. The enemy won't take that from me. Yeah. So let's use every circumstance, every experience, anything that happens to us, no matter what we are, no matter where we are, no matter who's around us, let's be like Paul and just spread the gospel, no matter what's happening to us. Let's have the mindset of we're blessed no matter where we are, and we can be a blessing to whoever's around us. Amen. Let's not be afraid to share our testimony because someone is in need of what we went through, and they need to know that God is there to help them get through it as well. Amen. We have to remind ourselves that we don't do things in our own strength. We need God. We need him to build us up, to fill us with his spirit, so that we can go full throttle because God gives us the confidence and the boldness and the strength we need to go forth and do what he's calling us to do. Because it can be scary. But like Teresa has said before, we have to do it afraid. Right. Even when we don't know how or what we're doing, if we let God, he will use us as a vessel and pour through us. Amen. He will give us the right words to say and when to say them. The provisions we need to accomplish everything he's calling us to do. Yes. We do this through prayer and reading his word. See, God created each and every one of us for a different reason. We're all made for a different purpose for, for his body. We're all equally important, but we all, but we need all parts of the body together in order for it to function properly. So just because one person is a mouth and the other person is eyes and ears doesn't make you less important. God needs you just as much. You are all equally important. Amen. So tonight, I pray each of you <clears throat> see God and see what he's calling you to do because now is the time. I pray that each of you experience a God moment, if you haven't already, a moment that no one can take from you, a moment that God meets you and shows you himself. The Bible says, if you seek me, you will find me. So it's up to us to seek him and he will meet us where we're at. It's so important that we find our identity in who Christ says we are. Let's step out guys and start doing God's work the way he's calling us to do. Souls are lost and dying. Let's be the change that we that people need, that this world needs. Let's show them there is hope in Christ. There is forgiveness and love. Let's demonstrate, let's demonstrate Christ's characteristics to each and every person around us. If you need prayer, the altar is open and our prayer team will come up and pray for you guys. But I'm just gonna close this out in prayer. So if you could all bow your heads. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us this opportunity to preach your word. I pray that it will fall on good soil, Lord Jesus, that you will touch each individual here and that these seeds will grow, that it will not die out when they leave, Father God. I pray your protection on each person here tonight and each person, each person watching, and that each person will seek your face and find you. Soften our hearts and our ears, Lord, to hear your voice. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and give you all the glory in Jesus' name.